Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video project. What is the best graphics card for the Super Socket 7 platform? This question often gets asked in forums and so I thought why not do a video series investigating this entire topic and there's lots of stuff to talk about. The Super Socket 7 platform is a popular choice because it's very flexible. It's great for DOS, it's great for Windows 98. It bridges these two uh, generations of DOS and early Windows 3D gaming. Because of the cache tricks, it's also flexible in terms of slowing it down and running 386 and 486 era games at the correct speed. The 3DFX Voodoo cards are often mentioned in regards to the SuperSocket 7 platform, so we'll start with those. Um, is it warranted? Are they really the best option? Or should you look at Matrox, NVIDIA, ATI, or maybe something else? So let's start this project. The motherboard we're using for this video project is from AOPEN. It's the AX59 Pro, and this has the VIA MVP3 chipset. They're basically two main chipsets that you can choose from for the SuperSocket 7 platform. This one from VIA, and the other one from ALI. The SuperSocket 7 processor we're using is a very popular choice. It's the AMD K63 Plus. This is the 400 megahertz rated version with a voltage rating of only 1.6 volts. And we're gonna uh, overclock that processor to 550 megahertz. I do recommend that you don't go for 600. There's a reason why AMD stopped at 550 megahertz. I found that you need um, significantly more voltage to go to 600. So I do recommend just stick with the 550. The performance difference is minimal anyway. The next step is to configure all the jumpers and dip switches. On this motherboard, there is one setting for the clocks. So there's a little table here. We make sure that the CPU is clocked at 100 MHz front side bus, the AGP at 66 and the PCI, PCI at 33. There's another set of jumpers for the memory clock. Um, you can synchronize it with the CPU clock, that's what we want. So if the front side bus of the CPU runs at 100 MHz, we also want the memory to run at 100 MHz. Then we have the CPU uh, multiplier, the ratio, set that to 5.5 to overclock the processor to 550 MHz. And then the last setting is for the voltage. Seeing this is a 1.6 volt rated processor, I settled for 2.0 volts. Um, and if I do get any stability issues, I'm just gonna raise the voltage a little bit, but I believe 2.0 volt should do the trick. For the memory, we're using a 128 megabyte stick of PC 133 memory. This stick is from Micron, very good brand. I found the compatibility with Socket 7 boards to be excellent. For storage, I'm using an 80 gigabyte hard drive from Seagate, but it has a jumper at the back to limit the capacity to 32 gigabytes. I'm just gonna do that just in case to be uh, more compatible with the bias. A lot of these biases don't support large hard drives. It is configured as master, and then we've got a optical drive, a DVD drive, configured as slave, and all that connects to the primary ID channel of the motherboard. I'm also gonna hook up a floppy drive, because Windows 98 likes to probe for a floppy drive during the installation. If you don't have one, the installation can take um, a very long time, just because it's looking for a floppy drive that is not connected. Power supply is a FSP Hexa HE500. Have been using this for ages and it gets the job done. The first 3DFX card we're gonna use is the Velocity 100. This card is basically on the level of a Voodoo 3 2000 and will answer the question whether or not it actually uh, makes sense to get something faster than a Voodoo 3 2000. 
Now, by default, the one TMU, TMU uh, unit is disabled for OpenGL, but if you install the latest Voodoo 3 driver, that TMU will actually be enabled. The other thing to mention is that the video memory is only half the size. It's got 8 megabytes of RAM, but that should be enough for the games that we are testing. And it has a full OpenGL compatibility, so we should be able to complete all the benchmarks. Okay, let's fire it up and make sure it works. And then we're gonna have a look at the BIOS options. So that's all looking fine. Let's enter the BIOS. And usually what I do is load the defaults. If there's an option for turbo defaults, I'll go for that. It still has the time and the date, that's cool, but the clock is a little bit off. Let me just fix that. Then I'm gonna disable a few resources that we don't need, like the serial and the parallel ports, we're not using them. I'll turn on USB legacy support, otherwise you don't have a keyboard in MS-DOS. Plug and play, Windows 98 is a plug and play operating system, so we enable that. We leave everything default here. And same goes with here, all the timings, that's all fine. There should be no reason to tweak anything. I'm just going to turn off the video bias shattering that's not needed anymore. And we're going to boot from the CD-ROM first. Okay, I'm just going to grab my Windows 98 installation disk and then we'll save the BIOS settings and start installing Windows.